Hello everybody, this special episode of the Molecular Cell Biology podcast is specifically set up for students who are taking my Molecular Cell Biology class at UTEP, the University of Texas at El Paso. Specifically, this is for Biology 3314. And the topic that I want to deal with today in this very special episode is simply one of the biggest questions that students face when they have already taken the first two exams in my class and they have already put substantial effort in trying to do their best in my class. Um, and that is the question of, well, there have been two exams. I didn't do that well in the first exam. Neither in the second. I also failed the second badly. But I've been putting the time, I've been putting the effort. And the rats, the quizzes that are associated with this class, the rats have been my life savior because I've been doing quite well in the rats. So let's address the question that comes associated with that. And that is, should I drop the class or should I stay? Should I try to still persevere and see if I can actually save the grade or should I just drop the class? Okay, so to answer that, let's think briefly about the components that go into the final grade for this class. So we have four exams that are given throughout the semester, and we already have two exams at this point. Besides the four exams, there is a final exam. Let's just call it FE, so final exam. And then on top of that, we have the RATS. RATS that are given throughout the semester, the quizzes that you have to take before coming to class. All right, and now let's associate numbers, values to those exams. Each one of these exams is worth 100 points. The final exam is worth 200 points. And then the rats are also worth 200 points. Okay, now on top of that, there are other added grades that need to be taken into consideration to calculate the final grade in there. But for the time being, let's just think what should you do if you have done poorly in the first two exams? So let's, let's assume that exam number one went really badly. So out of 100 points, you score 40. Keep in mind that for this particular semester, this is the fall semester of 2021, the students in the class had three extra points to claim in the first exam. That means that in order to get a 40, what you should have gotten in the test was 17 points. So 17 points plus three points that were given to everybody, that equals 20. 20 times two gives you 40. Remember that you have to multiply this times two. So you got 17 points in the actual test. That was 17 out of 56 questions. That's the other thing that you need to keep in mind. And whatever you get here, you add three, you multiply that times two, and that gives you a score in the first exam. For the second exam, let's assume that the student did a little better but it's still pretty badly. So second exam, 50 points, which means now on the second exam, the students had five extra points, three added to the test. So that means that this particular student had 20 points on the test. 20 plus five, that gives you 25 times two. That gives you the 50 points that the student has at this point. So 40 in the first exam, 50 in the second. That sounds like really bad. It's shaping to be kind of an F for the class, but the student is doing really well in the rats. So that means that the student is on its way to obtain out of the 10 rats that will be counted. Remember there are 15 rats that are given throughout the semester. Out of those 15, the student is likely to end up with 10. That will be pretty good. And let's assume that out of the 10, there will be nine that will be tens, so that will be 90 points. And there will be one that will be a nine. So nine times one, that's another nine points for a total of 99 points, which times two is 198 points. So out of the 200 points, the student is likely to get 198 in, as the total for the semester. So keep that in mind, keep that in the background. So what to do at this point? Now, the only thing that is missing right now are exams number three, that three 
turn out a little bad. I didn't want it to look that way. So let me erase that. Let's make a tree that is readable. Okay, and then exam four. And then the final exam. That's the other component that is still missing at this point. Okay, so let's assume that the student does fairly well in the exam number three. Let's say that the student gets a total of 80 points. But let's also assume that in exam number four, the student does really great, meaning the student gets a 90. It could be better. It could be a 96. It could be a 100. But let's assume that it is really good, but not excellent. So let's give it 90 points for exam number four. Now, keep in mind, this, the, this was a really bad start to the semester, but the student persists, decides to stay in the class, and then does ver better in exam three, substantially better in exam four. And then in the final, it's kind of okay. The student gets 80 out of 100, that'll be 160 out of 200 points, which is okay. So 160 out of 200, that's the equivalent to 80 out of 100. Okay. So with that now, it's time to do the final calculations. The first thing is, remember that even though there are only four exams, there is a, an additional exam that is considered for calculating the final grade, which is the exam number five. Now, exam number five is not a real exam. It's just simply the highest scoring exam that you have throughout the semester. So exam five, in this case, will be number four. So number four will count toward exam number five, which means now you have another exam with a score of 90. So now you have 90, 90, and 80, looking better already. All right, and then keep in mind that the final exam will substitute for your lowest exam grade. So the final exam was 160, which is 80 out of 100. That 80 will substitute your lowest exam grade, which means it will now substitute this value. So rather than having a 40 here, now you have an 80 for exam number one. And now all of a sudden, look what you have. You have 80 points in exam one, still 50 in exam two, 80 in exam three, 90 in exam four, 90 in exam five. And then you have 160 in, exam, in the final exam. Now things are looking substantially better. Now, let's go back to the rats. You have 198, which means you had more than five, sorry, more than 10 rats. You had more than 10 rats with a value of five or more, so higher than five. Since you had 10 rats with a value of five or more, you automatically get another 100 points. So 100 extra points, which add to the RAT scores. So now we have 298 points from the RATs. And that gets now added with everything else to get the final grade for your performance in molecular cell biology. So what is that final? So let's add it all up here. Let's put it all in this column. So what you have is 298 for the RATs, then 160 for the final exam. So let's put RATs, final exam. Exam one, two, three, four, and five. So exam one, again, it got turned into an 80. Exam two, still a 50. It's the worst grade out of all of them. Exam number three is an 80. Exam number four is a 90. And exam number five is another 90. So those are the grades that this student has now at this point. And that adds up to 160, this is 180, sorry, 260. Let's not put it there, let's just put it on the side. This is 260, this is 130, which combined with this would be 290. and 298. So let's add this up. That'll be eight. This will be 18 plus six, six that'll be 24. That's two, two, four, six, and eight. 848 points for total for the class. 
Now, 848 will be a B, but remember, there are additional points that can be added here, and that is the in-class activities. So if this person was somebody who came to class consistently and did all the in-class activities, uh, that person is very likely to have at least 50 points for in-class participation, uh, just for attendance, that is like just for participating in the in-class activities, not necessarily being present in the class, but participating in the activities. And then if the person did fairly okay in those questions, there might be a few extra points that will be coming from the point of view of just whatever extra points that person was able to, to get and accumulate from the in-class activities. So let's assume that that adds up to 60 points. This is now total 908 points, which is an A in the class. So even though this person had a pretty bad start in the class, this would be a really good example of somebody who, even though had a bad start, ended up with an A at the end of the whole process. 908 points, even though it looked almost hopeless at the beginning. But remember, in order for this to actually make sense, for, for, in order for this to be possible, you have to be putting your part, you have to be doing the rats, you have to be consistent in doing everything that you can to get the totality of these points, which are really kind of like the best way to do well in this class. The rats are basically the testimony that you're doing your part, that you're putting the work, the effort, and the time that is needed to do well in this class. Okay, so I think that the bottom line to the question of if you had a bad start in molecular cell biology, should you drop the class, yes or no? The bottom line is, well, if you are doing okay in the rats, you still have a chance. You just have to make sure that your performance in the following exams will be substantially better, and you also need to make sure that you will be okay in the final exam. If you feel that you're learning the concepts, that you're building a real foundation to do well in the final exam, the final exam is cumulative, but it's not so memory oriented, it's more toward the application of the basic concepts that we have covered throughout the semester. If you believe that you have that, that you have strong foundations so that you can actually do well in the final exam, then by all means, stay in the class, give it your best and put the time and the effort that will probably secure you at least a passing grade in this class. All right, I think this is all for this video. This is everything that I have. It's the very first time that I do a video like this using this technology. <laughs> it feels weird, but I think it works. So I may actually continue using this for future videos. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, um, indicate it here or here, somewhere in there, and subscribe.